Hello everyone, this is Young from Your Korea Friend. Are you planning to visit Jeju but don't know where to start? In this video, I will give you our tips about how to plan Jeju trip. So watch this video to plan your trip. By the way, if you haven't seen my four videos about where to visit in Jeju, then please watch those as well. Those videos will help you so much to know where to visit in Jeju. About Jeju. Jeju Island is a southern island in South Korea. It is a volcanic island formed by volcanic activity. With Halasan at its center, it is about three times the size of Seoul and is the largest tourist city in Korea. Jeju Island has both traditional and exotic elements, making it a very great place to visit. Many tourists visit to experience the unique atmosphere that cannot be felt in inland. The symbol of Jeju Island are Dolharubang, Halasan, tangerines, and beaches. The feeding keywords for Jeju Island are relaxation, travel, and nature. Many places in Jeju are designated by UNESCO as a World Natural Heritage Site, a Global Geopark, and Biospheric Reserve. History to go over a brief history of Jeju Island, Jeju Island is a volcanic island formed long ago by a volcanic explosion. Uh, according to the Samsung myth, three deities emerged from the land and established an independent country called Tamla, which means island country. Tamla lost its power during the Three Kingdom period in Korea and was renamed Jeju, which means large village across the sea during the Joseon Dynasty. During the Joseon Dynasty, Jeju Island was used as a place of exile for criminals, and during the Japanese colonial period, it was utilized as a military facility by the Japanese, with many Jeju residents forced into labor. Then 1948, the Jeju April 3rd incident occurred, uh, which is considered the largest tragedy in modern Korean history, resulting in the loss of tens of thousands of lives. Today, Jeju Island is widely known as a beautiful tourist destination, but many people still remember and share the painful history of Jeju so that it will never be forgotten. Tourism Industry Jeju Island began its transformation into tourist destination in the 1990s when South Korea was striving for economic development. During that time, many newlyweds started to choose the nearby but unique Jeju Island as their honeymoon destination. This led to significant investments in the tourism industry by various companies, making Jeju Island the largest tourist destination in Korea. Another surge in Jeju travel happened during COVID-19 as Koreans visited Jeju Island because traveling abroad was not allowed. However, as international travel resumes, the demand has slightly declined. Nevertheless, Jeju Island continues to be a popular choice for many people around the world. What to expect? A trip to Jeju Island is truly a time for nature and refreshing. You can look forward to exploring the beaches, hills, Halasa Mountain, waterfalls, caves, and other natural attractions. Uh, additionally, there are various activities to enjoy such as trekking, uh, cycling, hiking, playing golf, swimming, or driving a car or bike. And of course, food is one too. When to visit the most recommended time to visit Jeju Island are when cherry blossoms and flowers are blooming, that's from March to May, and when it gets colder to see silver grass, that's from November to December. However, Jeju Island offers a new and cultivating experiences regardless of the season, so any time you go is good, but try to avoid the rainy typhoon, snowfall periods as flight cancellation may occur, uh, which could disrupt your travel plans. To Jeju There are two main ways to travel to Jeju Island, by plane or by ferry. If you choose to travel by plane, uh, you can fly from nearby airports to Jeju Island. There are Jeju Airport in the northern side of the island. If you prefer to travel by ferry, cruise, you can depart from the ports of Incheon, Busan, Wando, Henam, Gohung, Mokpo, Yeosu, or Samchokpo to reach Jeju Island. For both plane and ferry, foreigners must have their passport with them. Map Jeju Island is divided into Jeju City in the north, uh, Sogipo City in the south. In the middle, there is Halasa Mountain, and all the roads on the island bypass it. Therefore, there is no direct road crossing through the middle. When traveling from one end of the island to the other, it takes about an hour and a half. 
and when moving from one attraction to another, it takes at least 20 minutes. It takes approximately four hours to go around the entire island. How to plan? In my opinion, it's best to plan a minimum of a two-night and three-day trip. If you go for less than that, there won't be much time you can do. With about a week, you should be able to visit most of the places. When planning your trip, it's a good idea to divide the map like this, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I recommend to plan one area per day to avoid spending too much time on transportation. Alternatively, uh, you can divide the island into upper, middle, and lower parts, or left, middle, and right parts probably to plan your 3-day travel. You can also divide the map into two for a shorter trip. Sokipo City has more attractions while Jeju City offers more food options. If it's your first time in Jeju Island, I personally recommend focusing on exploring Sokipo or the area around Songsan Yilchulbong, which is on the right side. Transportation there are several transportation options available for traveling in Jeju Island. First of all, there are rental cars, taxis, and buses. For those considering renting a car, it's important to compare different rental companies. There are many reviews stating that cheap rental places often come with problems afterwards, so it's best to avoid them. I don't recommend renting electrical cars. It can be difficult to find charging stations, and the existing ones are usually crowded, requiring you to wait. Additionally, you cannot leave the car unattended while you are charging the car, which can disrupt your schedule. Traveling by bus is also possible for exploring Jeju Island. Uh, some Koreans who don't drive use buses for their trips. However, unlike renting a car, you have less flexibility with time and your options for places to visit are limited. When traveling by bus, plan your itinerary, dividing it into left and right sections. When moving from the left side to the right side or vice versa, you may need to transfer buses in Jeju City or Sagipo City, which could result in long waiting times if the schedules don't align. Using taxis for traveling in Jeju is challenging. While you can take taxi from the city to tourist spots, there is a high possibility of not finding a taxi for your return. Moreover, Due to the island size, taking a taxi for every trip can be costly. The best transportation option is renting a car. It offers more flexibility with time, which is advantageous for exploring the island. Please note that beside rental cars, buses, and taxis, many tourists also plan and travel using motorcycles, bicycles, or by walking. Where to stay? There are four main types of accommodations in Jeju Island. Hotels, resorts, Airbnb, and guest houses. Hotels are abundant in Jeju City, while resorts are more prevalent in Sogipo City. Additionally, there are many lovely accommodations scattered throughout the island. I recommend choosing your accommodation based on your travel itinerary. Uh, if you plan to explore only the right side of the island, choose a location on the right side. And if left, then left. Personally, I recommend staying near Jeju City or Sogipo City. By staying in these areas, you'll have convenient access to roads to travel both left and right as well as up and down the island. Uh, Jeju City being the largest city offers a wide range of restaurants. Sogipo City with its numerous tourist attractions is the second largest city and also has many dining options. Food. Now let's go over some must-try foods when you visit Jeju Island. Black Pork Belly. Jeju Island is famous for its black pork. Uh, in other regions, People usually eat a regular pork belly called samgyeopsal. Jeju's black pork belly is called ogyeopsal, which includes the skin, giving it a unique taste. When you visit popular restaurants, the staff will grill the pork for you, making it easier for you to have convenient dining experiences. Silver hair tail. Silver hair tail is a delicious fish found in Jeju Island. It is so tasty that tourists even order it for delivery from the local market. It can be prepared as grilled or braised. Grilled silver hair tail is served whole, seasoned with salt for a savory flavor. Braised silver hair tail is served into pieces, giving it a spicy and sweet taste. I recommend trying the grilled version first, and if you're traveling with a group, you can try both together. Uh, pork noodle. 
Pork noodle is a traditional dish of Jeju Island. It consists of noodles served in a bone broth with meat and garnishes on top. The rich flavor of bone broth and the addition of meat make it a hearty dish. Gomal kalguksu. This is another local food of Jeju Island. It is a wheat noodle soup made with top shells. Compared to regular kalguksu, it has a clean and mild taste. Also, it may seem like a plain soup with noodles. You can distinctly taste the flavor and aroma of top shells. Seafoods. When it comes to Jeju Island, seafood is a must try. Fresh sliced raw fish, seafood stew with a delicate yet spicy flavor, and steamed seafood with spicy seasoning and vegetables are some of the dishes you should try. You will experience the fresh taste of Jeju coastal waters. Omegi Dog. In the past, Jeju Island had an abundance of chajo seeds which were used to make rice cakes and liquor. Uh, omegi dog is a rice cake made from that seeds. Personally, I don't enjoy it much, but it's one of the things that you should try in Jeju Island. Tangerine. When I think of Jeju Island, tangerine comes to mind. There are historical records dating back to the Tamna era, highlighting the significance of tangerine as a tribute to the kingdom. Uh, Jeju Island has the perfect condition for growing tangerine, and their cultivation is highly encouraged by the government due to their profitability. You can enjoy tangerine throughout the year, but they are especially delicious in winter. In addition to tangerine, Jeju is also known for various other citrus fruits such as halabong, cheonaeyang, and red hyang. Don't miss the opportunity to try them. Uh, drinks, dessert, and chocolate with tangerine flavors are also good. Green tea. Jeju Island is famous for its green tea fields, which have become a popular tourist attraction. The island provides the ideal conditions for growing green tea. There are many desserts and drinks made with Jeju green tea, so be sure to try them. Uh, Starbucks also offers a green tea beverage that is exclusive to Jeju Island, so check it out. Today, I went over tips about Jeju Island. Whenever I visit Jeju Island, I usually book accommodation in the upper middle part of the island and rent a car to explore. I have spent one day in Jeju City, another day in Sogipo City, and another day in the central part of the island. Having a place to stay in the middle allowed me to return and rest in between, making it more convenient for me. I hope I haven't overwhelmed you with too much information in today's video. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions about Jeju Island, please leave them below in comment section. Uh, I will gather the common questions and provide answers. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please press the like button and give us comment which will greatly support us. Also, subscribe our channel to receive more information about traveling in Korea, Korea travel tips. Thank you for watching today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.